So even those people that are really good in algebra and strong at factoring are going to have a tough time with this problem right here. So we want to factor this expression. Matter of fact, I think most people will not be able to factor this polynomial, but maybe you are the exception. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We want to factor the following. We have 4x squared minus 12xy plus 9y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 3. And I'm going to give you a hint, and that, hi uh, that hint is that this is factorable. In other words, this is not a prime uh, situation where this can't be factored. This can be factored. And if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And of course, we'll walk through exactly how we can factor large polynomial expressions like this. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. And first things first, first we want to kind of review whether in fact uh, you have some basic factoring skills before we take on this big problem right here. All right, now um, I did indicate that this thing is factorable. So when it comes to polynomials and expressions like this and algebra, you gotta think of like uh, numbers, right? So let's just take two numbers here real quick, eight and 11. So eight we can factor, right? So the factors of eight is one and eight and two times four. So this is how we would factor eight, right? And again, these are the factors of eight. Now, 11, the only factor we have is 1 and 11. So anytime you have a number where the factor, uh, the only factors you have is 1 and that number, well, this is what we call a prime number. And you can have that situ uh, situation with polynomials as well, right? So in other words, this is not, uh, you know, factorable. It just has 1 and itself. So that would be prime. But you don't know that when it comes to polynomials unless you try. There's nothing that you kind of can do to kind of tell you the answer. Well, that kind of, that's not exactly true. Um, there is a few things you could do, but that's for another video. But that's not really that important in this particular case because uh, what we need to do is look at this and say, all right, I want to try to factor this. What tools can I bring to bear in order to factor this expression? Because factoring is a critical, critical part of mathematics. But uh, before we get into this big thing right here, let's review some basic, simple problems like these. Okay, so this is just a quick little pop quiz to see if you can factor the following expressions. All right, now, if you want to pause the video and do these real quick, this will take you all of about maybe 45 seconds to factor. But let's go ahead and uh, talk about how to factor this first thing right here. So we have 2x plus 8. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to factor out the greatest common factor. So that would be 2. So that would be 2 times x plus 4. Now, you can always check to see if you uh, factored something correctly by multiplying back in. So if I can take this 2, multiply it by uh, x, and then 2 times 4, I'm going to get back to this. Now, I'm talking about a huge, huge topic here in algebra, which is factoring. Uh, there's a lot of different skills involved. And if you are struggling in factoring, well, that's pretty common amongst uh, algebra students. I'll give you some specific recommendations how you can improve. But if you can't do these problems, well, this is where you want to uh, start. All right, so that is that. Let's move on to this next problem right here. So we have 3x cubed minus 12x. All right, so another greatest common factor situation. So we can factor out a 3 what? Well, a 3x. And we're left with what? We have an x squared here because 3x times x squared is going to get us back to 3x cubed. Okay. Now we have minus what? Well, we have a 4 because 3 times 4 is 12. And that is that because we have an x of so 3x and times this 4 will get us back to 12x. And hopefully uh, these first two problems were pretty easy. All right. So now let's talk about this quadratic trinomial a squared plus 2a minus 3. So I'm just going to give you the answer here. So the answer is a plus 3 times a minus 1. All right, now this whole uh, situation right here, how to factor quadratic uh, trinomials, is a big part. Uh, mother, matter of fact, I mean, this takes 
not general, not a full chapter uh, in algebra, but definitely a couple of sections, and it's something that you have to practice a lot. So hopefully this was uh, pretty easy. Now, there's two types of quadratic trinomials. One where their coefficient is 1, so like in this scenario, these are very easy. But if I had a different coefficient, let's say like 5a squared plus 3a minus uh, 18 or something like that, well, this is a whole different deal. And I'm not going to uh, put one of these problems uh, up there, but you need to be able to do those type of problems in order to do uh, the problem that we need to face this big, huge polynomial expression. All right, so again, we're just kind of checking to see if you have some basic skills here in factoring. And let's go ahead and do this last one. We have y squared minus 9. So this is a difference of two squared situation. So this is y minus 3 times y plus 3. Again, we can check that we have the right factors by just multiplying back in. So we, here we can use the FOIL method. So y times y is y squared. Then we have a positive, uh, we have 3y minus 3y, of course, a positive 3y three, three minus 3y, that goes away. These cross cancel one another, then we end up with a negative 9. So again, uh, the difference of two squares. All right, now, if you're able to do these problems, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this stuff is easy. Don't bore me with this stuff. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I just want to make sure you have some basic factoring skills. And uh, now let's move on to this problem. And this problem, we're going to need group factoring. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar with group factoring. Now, a lot of you, I'm going to make a little math joke here, are probably saying, yes, Mr. Uh, YouTube Math Man, that's what I want to hear, group factoring. Now, group factoring doesn't mean you're going to get all your best friends that are really good in math, and you're going to work together as a quote-unquote group to tackle this problem. I mean, that is a fantastic strategy. Yes, we need multiple people uh, to go to work on this problem. No, no, that's not what this means. Group factoring means something different. But anyways, that's just a little math joke. And uh, for those of you that are math students, if you have to get in some sort of group, you know what, you always want to uh, get with those people that are going to help you out. But, you know, it's also good, too, uh, uh, for you to help other people in math. It's a little side comment as well. Uh, that's good for two reasons. One, you you are helping someone else, okay? So in other words, if you're in your class, you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really care about no one else. I'm not the teacher. Well, listen, there's two things here. One, it always feels good to help someone out. So if this person is sad and you know how to do something, you're like, all right, all right, I'll help you out. But if you can teach something, okay, this uh, process of teaching is one of the best ways to uh, for you to know whether you know something. If you can teach something and this person understands it, that means you really understand and comprehend uh, all the material involved. So it's a good check for understanding, but also too, it's just good to just help other people. And if you get really good at teaching math or helping people with math, you can make money as a math tutor. But uh, let's uh, continue our focus on the problem. All right, so we need group factoring. So what is group factoring? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we want to do here. Okay, so we want to look at this problem in terms of two groups. All right, so uh, I'm going to kind of um, guide you through this if you weren't thinking in these terms or if you never really uh, did any group factoring problems. So what I want you to do is to focus on factoring uh, this group right here. This is factorable. Okay, so try to factor this and then try to factor some stuff over here. And I'm keeping this a little bit more general and vague because if you've ever done group factoring before, I want to kind of, uh, you know, encourage you to do some of this on your own. All right, so this is what we need to do. And we have two groups here. And sometimes these problems are arranged in a way where the groups are easily identifiable. Sometimes you kind of have to shuffle things around. But in this particular problem, uh, the problem is already written out uh, where the two groups hopefully were identifiable. Okay, so uh, you want to factor here and you want to factor some stuff over here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. All right, so right here, this uh, trinomial expression, 4x squared minus 12xy plus 9y squared, can be factored with these two binomials right here, 2x, uh, 2x minus uh, 3y times 2x minus 3y. Now, if you look right here, we have this 4x squared. If we take the square root of 4x squared, we have a 2x. And if we take the square root, of 9y squared, that is 3y. Now, this isn't a difference of two squares situation, but you might be saying, all right, well, I have an x and I have a y, and here this middle term has xy. So if you're really good at factoring trinomials, 
you can start kind of playing around with this and saying, all right, let me just uh, try 2x minus 3y times 2x minus 3y. And look what happens. 2x times 2x, that's going to get us back to 4x uh, uh, squared. And then here, I have 2x minus this 3y. That gets me to negative 6xy. Now I have negative uh, 3y times this 2x. That gives me another 6xy. And you're like, wow, this is working out. So negative 3y times negative 3y gives me a positive 9y squared. And look at that. It uh, you know works out using a FOIL technique. We have negative 6xy and negative 6xy. This is negative 12xy. So these two are indeed the factors of this group. Okay, but of course we want to factor the entire thing, but at least we factor this part of the problem right here. Okay, now if you got this right, that's very, very good. Okay, so, you know, uh, you can do these problems if you've definitely got to this point in, if you're like, well, I didn't see how to do that, but now you know, well, again, you know, experience is going to make you better in anything. All right, so let's take a look at this other group and... Uh, what can we do over here? Okay, what kind of factoring can we do? Well, look at this first group. Okay, I'm kind of giving you a big hint here. 2x minus 3y, right? You might be looking, hey, we got this factor over here, 2x minus 3y. It would be awesome if 2x minus 3y could show up as a factor over here. Okay, well, hopefully you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I see it right there, 4x uh, minus 6y. I can factor, and indeed you can. So if we can factor this part right here, uh, 4x minus 6y, we can factor out a 2, the greatest common factor. So that's going to be 2 times 2x minus 3y. Okay, what gets us back to 4x minus 6y minus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. I'm going to give you a big clue, and that is look at this 2x minus 3y squared plus 2 times 2x minus 3y minus three. Hopefully you see a pattern here. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish up this lovely problem. Now, uh, you know, I am not af afraid to ask for help or assistance. <laughs> you know, yeah, certainly I'm stopping this video and saying, hey, I need your help. Okay. And the best way you can help me is to subscribe. Now you might be saying, hey, why should I help you? Well, my goal, okay, I'm going to tell you why you should help me, and hopefully this is a compelling enough reason for you to hit that subscribe button, but uh, my whole channel, YouTube channel, is, you know, my whole mission is try to, to, is try to make math clear and understandable. Math is just one of these notorious subjects that so many people just don't like, or, you know, it really plays on a lot of people's self uh, image or self-confidence. And I know this because I've been doing this for many, 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 many years. A lot of people think that oh, I'm bad at math, uh, you know, and that can kind of translate into I'm not smart enough to learn this subject. And guess what? This is not true. This is not true. But a lot of people, because they struggle in mathematics, will start planting these ideas in their head. Like, hey, maybe there's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay. And if you think that, well, I'm just bad at math and maybe I should just stick to, you know, whatever this subject, you know, again, there's serious consequences to not uh, being reasonably successful in any subject. Okay. But math just seems to be one of these, you know, subjects that people have a tough time with. So if you are struggling in math, please don't give up. You know, I'm just telling you right now, you can learn this stuff, but it does take a lot of hard work. Okay. And you have to build your skill sets up one at a time. That is the truth. So if anyone is telling you um, anything different, like, hey, you could just learn, you know, uh, calculus in three days. Well, they're just lying to you. All right. So be careful. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my full course instruction um, or my full courses, which I do my complete full instruction. That's what I meant to say. You can find links to all that in the description. So whether you're at pre-algebra, algebra one, pre-calculus, geometry, doesn't make a difference. Now, if you are not a math student, check out my math skills rebuilder course. That is a great course for those of you that want to relearn uh, math uh, starting from the very, very basics. Okay, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to uh, tell you what I'm all about. But now let's go and get back into this problem. And hopefully some of you are like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I see what you're doing here. Uh, this thing squared plus two times this same thing minus three. Maybe we can use substitution here and think of this as a quadratic trinomial. And you would be absolutely right. So let's let this variable A, 
okay, represent this 2x minus 3y, right? Because this is going to make this expression very interesting and easy to work with. So let's go ahead and see what I'm, to, um, you know, what I'm suggesting right now. So if we let a equal 2x minus 3y, well, this right here is 2x minus 3y, so we can replace this with a. Okay, so we end up with a squared plus 2 times 2x minus 3y. We can, play, we can replace this with a as well. So we have a squared plus 2a minus 3. Now we have a lovely quadratic trinomial. And this thing right here, we actually, this is one of these little pop quizzes that I gave you, uh, one of the pop quiz questions that I gave you in the beginning of this video. This can be factored, okay? So a squared plus 2a minus 3 is um, uh, factorable into these two binomials, a plus 3 times a minus 1. And now, hopefully, you're like, yes, yes, I see what you're going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Now that we're able to factor this thing with a, I can plug back in uh, for these a for these a's right there. We can plug this back in and finish this problem up. And you're absolutely right. So let's go ahead and finish that up. All right, so we factor this using substitution. So here's the factor. So now we're going to plug back in for these a's right here, uh, 2x minus 3y. Okay, so when we do that, so this is a plus 3, but it's the same thing as 2x minus 3y plus 3 times uh, this a minus 1, which is the same thing as 2x minus 3y minus 1. And, of course, we can clean this up a little bit more, uh, drop these parentheses, and this is what we have. Okay, so this is an example of group factoring. This does occur, uh, but it's uh, definitely more common uh, to see these type of problems in a little bit more advanced math, like college algebra, pre-calculus. But factoring in and of itself is absolutely critical. It very well may be one of the most, or probably the most, critical skills uh, that is needed to be successful in algebra and more um, advanced algebra. And again, when it comes to group factoring, uh, you know, oftentimes students just don't get enough practice with this stuff. So don't feel bad. But these problems right here, these hopefully were pretty easy to you. Now, if these weren't easy for you to, uh, easy problems for you to do, well, then I would call this a math emergency. So you definitely have to go check out one of my math courses so you can learn this stuff. But uh, nevertheless, I hope you got something out of this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.